Is that a hand? Am I a puppet? Is any of this real? If I'm not real, how am I thinking this? Hey, he's kind of cute. Is he real? I want to kiss him. <laughs> Gross. Good morning, Mooresville High School. Today, we are taking some time to discuss vaping. This is a conversation that, quite frankly, is long overdue. The increase of vaping and the use of e-cigarettes, such as Juul's, is well documented nationwide, and there is no question that we see the same trend here at Mooresville High School. On Friday, January 11th, we shared the new discipline plan with students and parents, as well as information about the Vaping Info Night we are holding in the Performing Arts Center tomorrow, January 24th at 7 p.m., but more on those later. I want to start off by sharing with you why we are talking about vaping today. There are three main reasons. The first is that vaping is dangerous, plain and simple. The substances used in vapes contain harmful chemicals and more often than not, ridiculously high levels of nicotine. People can alter vaping devices to use substances that contain cannabinoids and THC, which are derivatives of marijuana. Also, Vaping is such a new phenomenon that researchers have not yet had enough time to determine the long-term health effects of vaping. So for those of you that say vaping is safe, you're wrong. The second reason we are talking about vaping is that you need to know. You need to know what is in these vaping devices, how it is bad for you, and what the long-term impacts are. I've talked to so many students who have been caught vaping and some have no clue, or they just want to ignore this information. But you can't afford to do so. You also need to know how you're being played by companies such as Juul. Advertisers know exactly how to get teenagers to purchase these substances in order to get you hooked. How? Because they have decades of experience doing so with cigarettes. Decades ago, advertisers were so successful in getting young people hooked to cigarettes that the government has no choice but to pass laws and regulations against these techniques. But since we're talking about vaping and not smoking cigarettes, advertisers can take out those old playbooks and use it on you. The last reason we're talking about vaping today is that it is impacting us here. Seniors, when you were freshmen, we only had one referral for vaping for the whole school year. The next year, we had nine referrals. Last year, there were 59 referrals for vaping. And so far this year, we've had 68 referrals, and we're only halfway through the school year. As young adults, you are dealing with a phenomenon that has hit teenagers so hard and so fast that I can honestly say None of the adults in the building have experienced anything like it when we were your age. It's impacting your generation, and if you're vaping, will continue to negatively affect you for years to come, and we want to help. Earlier, I mentioned that some people can alter vaping devices to inhale substances that include THC, the component of marijuana that gives one the high feeling. Did you know that in the last year, there have been two separate incidents in which an ambulance has had to come to Mooresville High School to transport a student to the hospital for vaping, THC. The concentrations were so high that two of your classmates could have died or suffered severe, long-lasting health effects due to this stuff. We as a school will not continue to stand by or bury our heads in the sand and pretend that vaping isn't a problem at Mooresville High School. There are no magic words that I can say to prevent you from picking up a vape or to get those of you who currently vape to stop. If there were, I would have said them already and you'd be on your way to first block. So I need you to join our efforts to reduce vaping among students. Join your teachers, your parents, and your guardians to take a stand against vaping. I want to thank you in advance for paying attention and participating in the lesson we have prepared for you today. So now, on to the next segment. 
Honestly, yeah, guys, I've been vaping, but it's safer than smoking. Not really, because if you vape, you're four times more likely to start smoking cigarettes anyway. <laughs> four times is nothing, bro. Sure it is. Imagine having four times as many cats. Or oh, four times worse vision. <laughs> or four times more of Kyle. Whoa, that's, that's a lot. lot. If you vape, you're four times more likely to start smoking cigarettes. This is an ad for one of today's hottest products. If you don't look carefully though, you might miss what it's advertising. It's this little thing, and it's called Jewel. Jewel looks more like a flash drive or computer device, but it is really another kind of e-cigarette. Since it launched in 2015, Jewel has taken over about 70% of the e-cigarette retail market share. It's now worth about $16 billion, and that success is often attributed to its sleek design. But the same features that make Juul a well-engineered product also make it attractive to young people, many of whom have never smoked before. And that has people worried, because devices like Juul might be designed to help smokers get off cigarettes, but they're also addicting a new generation to nicotine. So what makes this one e-cigarette so different from the rest? Answering that question starts with what you see on the outside. Juul is an e-cigarette, but it really doesn't look like one. It looks like a tech product, and it's tiny. That allows smokers to get a nicotine fix without having to worry about social stigma, but also allows young users to consume nicotine inconspicuously without having to worry about who sees them. Going to school, having this in your pocket is a lot better than having like, like something this big that looks kind of like a lightsaber. You know, you could kind of jewel anywhere in discreetness. That discreetness is a big shift for e-cigarettes. Since the first patent in 1930, designs haven't been very subtle. The first generation of e-cigarettes mimicked the shape, size, and colors of traditional cigarettes, sometimes even with a fake light-up tip. The second and third generations focused on larger and more customizable devices with longer battery life and big plumes of vapor. Then came the Juul, a stripped-down version with no buttons, no big plumes of vapor, and no complex refilling or recharging. And it comes in a variety of bright colors that set it apart from other e-cigarettes, which made it look like a tech product that young people were already familiar with. That is why people call Juul the iPhone of e-cigs. And that similarity makes sense. Juul's founders met at Stanford Design School, and one worked as a design engineer at Apple. They created the first e-cigarette that looked more like a cool gadget and less like a drug delivery device. This wasn't smoking or vaping. It was Juuling. Yeah, like how grandmas have iPhones now, it's kind of like normal kids have Juuls now. Because it looks so modern, we kind of trust modern stuff a little bit more, so we're like, we can use it. We're not going to have any trouble with it because you can trust it. The tech um, aspect definitely helps people get introduced to it. And then once uh, once they're introduced to it, they're staying because they're conditioned to like all these different products. And then this is another product and it's just another product until you're addicted to nicotine. And that is where it gets tricky. A 2017 study found that 25% of 15 to 24 year olds recognized the jewel in a photo, but the majority of them didn't know that it always contains nicotine. It's easy to trace that information gap. You just have to look at the ads. When you look at Jewel's marketing today, you find video testimonials from adult ex-smokers. My name is Lauren. My name is Brandon. My name is Carolyn. My name is Aman. I'm 38. But when Jewel first launched, their marketing looked a lot different. When you put those ads alongside old cigarette ads, the similarities are pretty striking. Both marketed relaxation, sharing, travel, freedom, and sex appeal. It's now illegal for cigarette brands to use these kinds of suggestive advertising themes. But for e-cigarette manufacturers who had products on the market before 2016, those strategies are still unregulated. That's why a brand like Candy Pens can be promoted in DJ Khaled music videos, just like tobacco corporations used to pay stars to smoke their cigarettes on screen. But compared to cigarettes, jewels are a lot easier to start using. 
Typical e-cigarettes have between 6 and 30 milligrams of nicotine per milliliter of vape liquid. One Juul pod packs in 59 milligrams. That's three times the nicotine levels permitted in the European Union, which is why Juul isn't sold there. But here in the US, e-cigarettes don't have the same restrictions, even though we know that nicotine dependency can prime developing brains for future substance abuse disorders. The company says that Juul's nicotine content is about as much as a pack of cigarettes, though tobacco experts say it's likely more than that. And Juuls have a patented system for delivering that nicotine. Most e-cigarettes use a potent version of nicotine called Freebase that gives users a strong hit. But Juuls vaporize a liquid made from nicotine salts. Those salts allow nicotine to be absorbed into the body at about the same speed as regular cigarettes, much faster than most e-cigarettes. But unlike freebase nicotine, which can be irritating, nicotine salt goes down smoothly. So Juul packs a bigger nicotine dose into a much more pleasant hit than most devices on the market. And that has public health officials worried, because the US almost beat nicotine addiction among kids. As cigarette smoking among those under 18 has fallen, the use of other nicotine products, and especially e-cigarettes, has taken a drastic leap. In April, the FDA demanded that Juul submit documents on its marketing and research. A group of senators sent a letter asking Juul to stop using flavors and designs that appeal to children. And there are now three lawsuits alleging that Juul contains too much nicotine. In response to the concerns, the makers of Juul have pledged $30 million to combat underage use. Merchandise and marketing materials now have big warning labels on them, and the company is developing lower nicotine pods. The trouble is, there's still a lot we don't know about the long-term health impacts of e-cigarettes. Juul, like other e-cigarettes, might have set out to design a solution to a public health problem. But in a lot of ways, their product has created a new one. Vaping is like safer than Vaping is safe safer than safer than safer than addictive personality, so I won't get hooked on vaping. Vaping delivers nicotine to the brain in as little as 10 seconds, and a teen's brain is still developing, making it more vulnerable to nicotine addiction. Vapes don't have nicotine. Nicotine isn't bad for me. Most vapes, including all jewels, do contain nicotine. Nicotine exposure during the teen years can disrupt the normal brain development and alter the normal structure of the brain, creating permanent damages. Just because I vape doesn't mean I'm going to start smoking cigarettes. Evidence suggests that teens who vape are more likely to try smoking cigarettes. E-cigarettes without nicotine are harmless and only produce water vapor. Vaping can expose the user's lungs to harmful chemicals like formaldehyde, diacetyl, and acrolein, as well as toxic metal particles like nickel, tin, and lead. I've been vaping, but it's safer than smoking. You know, one Juul pod contains as much nicotine as 20 cigarettes. 26, 26, 26, 26, 26. 20 cigarettes. At this time, I'd like to go over our discipline plan for vaping. We have made changes to our discipline plan when dealing with vaping at school for two reasons. First, we are making the consequences more severe in order to serve as a deterrent so that students don't even try vaping or vaping at school. Secondly, we want this to be an educational practice. So we've implemented activities that you'll have to complete so that you can learn information about vaping in the hopes that you would use that information to change your behaviors. So for the first offense of vaping, you will be assigned two days of out of school suspension. 
The reason we've moved to out of school suspension is because it is a more severe consequence. When applying for colleges, you will have to report that you have been suspended out of school. While out of school, you will have to rewrite an informational sheet on the dangers of vaping. This must be handwritten and you must submit upon your return to school your handwritten rewrite of the information sheet. Thirdly, when you return to school, you will have to serve one 30-minute session of after-school detention within five days of your return. During that detention period, you will have to watch an informational video about vaping and answer questions regarding the information presented in the video. In your second offense during the school year for vaping, you will be assigned four days of out-of-school suspension. While out of school, you must rewrite a different info sheet on the dangers of vaping before you return. And you'll have to attend two 30-minute sessions of after-school detention. In each of those sessions, you will have to watch a different video and answer questions on the information provided in the video. Additionally, because you have now accumulated a total of six days of out of school suspension, you will be placed on the loss of privileges plan. The loss of pri privileges plan means that you will be unable to participate or attend extracurricular activities. This includes clubs, athletics, the prom, attending games, etc. On your third offense, you will be assigned 10 days of out of school suspension. We will give you the option to reduce that to five days if you complete a counseling session on vaping cessation. During that time, you will also have to write a research paper, and that research paper must be returned to us upon your return to school. If you have been off the loss of privilege list, we will put you back on the loss of privilege list on your third offense. And with your fourth offense, or any more than four during the school year, you will receive a 10-day suspension and be placed on the loss of privileges list, and I will recommend you for long-term suspension to the superintendent. These will be the consequences for students who are caught vaping at Mooresville High School. If we are able to determine that the substance you are vaping contains THC or any other drug, you will fall under a different category of consequences. That is the same consequences system we will use and have been using for alcohol and marijuana. Those consequences are also outlined on the discipline plan that we have sent out on January 11th. If you have any questions about this discipline plan, please email your grade level administrator. Thank you. Did you know that one jewel pod contains 20 cigarettes of nicotine? That is completely absurd. Now we know what you're thinking. You think this is weird and creepy? But you're the one watching Puppet ASMR, you freak. S -s 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 -s